Good evening out there in YouTube land. It's the North Carolina Vinyl Picker. And it's, what day is it? It's hump day. Yeah, it's Wednesday. And I got a fresh 50 for you um, after last night's show. I could only do one show at a time. The, the internet up here is lousy. So um, I just did that one last night. I figured I'd just go ahead and do the fresh 50 tonight. And I have one record to show you at the end. It's one of my grails, my all-time grails. Now, I, some people throw that uh, name out a little bit too loosely, and I've been accused of that myself. But this one here is a record I've been listening to for a long, long time. And I used to have it on vinyl, I believe, and it went out with The Purge. But I've had copies on um, CDR for quite a few years from my friend John in New Jersey. But, uh, excuse me, so, yeah. Okay, well... Cheers, and uh, here's to you. Time to have me some uh, flight. And we're going to flight it right on with this Fresh 50. We're going to start off with, seeing how we're still in the S's. And uh, if you don't know about Stuart Ham, he is an awesome bass player. Um, you know, check him out. He plays with Joe Satriani. And um, I have all his, just about all his CDs. But I was in the antique mall one day. And I've seen this one there, and I couldn't believe it was five bucks. I've never seen it on vinyl before. And uh, this is an 88 release. And you know what I tell you about them eight, late 88 releases, early 90s. They're hard to find because they were making CDs back then, not records. But, uh, yeah, glad to have this in the collection. It was a huge find. I'd like to find a couple more of his vinyls, but uh, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. What else we got here? Things how we're still in the Steve Hackett got this off. This is a record store release, and uh, I have the uh, DVD of this, and I think I have the CD of this. But uh, this is an older concert. Uh, this is from when is this from? This is from uh, '96. So, uh, man, this is a great one. Watch Through the Skies, Riding the Colossus, Birth of Fifth, Battle Lines, Camino Royale. Court of the Crimson King, the Tokyo Tapes. He did this along with um, John Wetton, Chester Thompson from Genesis, Ian McDonald from uh, King Crimson, and Julian Colbeck, which I believe was his drummer back then. But uh, Steve Hackett, you gotta love Steve Hackett. He does some of his solo stuff on here, and he does some of his um, the Genesis stuff. This is probably actually the first time uh, going back that far that he uh, started doing all the Genesis songs on his uh, tours. Steve Howe album. He had another album before this one. I think it was called Beginnings. One of them he sings on. He's a lousy singer. Sorry to say. But he's an excellent guitar player. But he's a terrible singer. But uh, I think this is the one. I'm not sure if this is the one or the other one. The one where he sings on it. But uh, this album... They're both good, and they got Bill Bruford on them, and this is a uh, demo promo, not for sale, and uh, it's a time strength uh, promo. So the Steve Howe album. Can't get these records to stand up. There you go. Maybe that'll work. Things how we're in the Steves. How about the Steve Miller Band, Living in the USA? I found both of these at a uh, antique mall not too far from here. And they were five bucks a piece, and they play great. And they're on the orange capital. And I'm uh, glad to have them. I think I'm only missing about two more of these. Some people say that the uh, early Steve Miller is better than the uh, later on Steve Miller. So I have to agree with them. I like this older Steve Miller, too. Instead of the uh, big jet airliner. There's another one here, number five. So he made five. I think he made five records before we moved on. To his 70s output. Looks like I got three of them, so must be missing two of them. And about this guy right here, Steve Morse. A lot of people in the listen to music know about this guy. This is a great album. If you get a chance to listen to this one, stand up. He made several uh, solo albums or with another band, but uh, he was in the Dixie Dregs and uh, also in Kansas, I believe, and Deep Purple. Incredible guitar player. What else we got? How about Steve Winwood? Oh, we're going to be showing Winwood for a while here. This is Winwood with friends. Um, Eric, kind of like a best of. Eric Clapton with the Yardbirds, Jeff Beck, Ginger Baker, 
Long John Baldry, uh, Jack Bruce, and Sonny Boy Williamson. So there you go. That's going to be on the uh, springboard label. They did a lot of comps. How about this double album? Steve Winwood. Self-titled. It's got Give Me Some Lovin' on it. It's got a lot of great songs. Here's uh, his first uh, solo album, After Leaving Traffic. I actually have two copies of this. This one here came from, looks like it came from a library. And um, it really plays nice, but uh, you can tell that people all checked it out and everything. So I wasn't going to go ahead and get rid of this one. I'm going to go ahead and keep keep a hold of this one. I usually don't keep two copies of stuff, but in this case, I'm going to make an exception. Probably my favorite uh, Steve Winwood album, Ark of the Diver. And I have a couple of 45s also from this album. What we got next? How about Talking Back to the Night? Another big hit for uh, Mr. Steve Winwood. I think this one's got that song uh, Valerie on it. Back in the High Life. This probably is uh, best selling record. It's a great record. Real polished. Um, it came out in 86. It's got Higher Love, Freedom Overspill, Back in the High Life again. He probably pulled five uh, hits off of this album. He could almost make a greatest hits. Steve Winwood greatest hits album with one side from just from this album. That's a good thought. What do you think of that? How about this one here? Freedom Overspill. 12 inch single I found at the antique mall up here, not too far. I think he had three bucks on these. I think I got two of them from him. He had three dollars on that one. And this one here. Freedom Overspill. A different, uh, this is a promo not for sale. The other one was the um, UK release. What we got here? Here's Chronicles. That's his best of. I think I have my collection of Steve Winwood. It's just about perfect until we get to the end and then it's mostly CDs. Uh, talking back to the night. I saw Steve Winwood. Um, probably was in the 90s. Late 90s. Early to late, late 90s. And uh, he was just uh, fantastic. Then uh, we went across the street and we went upstairs to a uh, record store over there, Virgin Re Mega Store in Orlando, and we uh, he was signing uh, CDs, and I bought uh, Spy in the um, House of Love, and he signed it, Steve Winwood, he signed it, and it was real nice. Um, so yeah, I got that. I'll have to show that sometime. And then, um, so during the show, my friend that was with me, John, he... Uh, he had his camera, he was taking pictures and stuff. So the uh, guy came down and told him, he said, uh, this is before cell phones. So he said, he said that you can either give me the camera and uh, you get it back later or um, you're gonna uh, lose your camera. So uh, he, he, didn't, he didn't want him taking pictures. So he got rid of the, he was gonna take the film out on, uh, so he got his camera back, I believe at the end of the show with no film in it. How about this one here? Um, roll with it. And this is um, has the hype sticker and everything on there. Pretty cool. Here's the roll with it 12 inch promo. Now we're going to go into Steve Wilson land. And uh, this is unreleased electronic music. Steven Wilson's uh, pretty much his first solo album. What you're listening to is Ragnarok. Fata Morgana. How about this Steven Wilson album? Insurgentes. Insurgentes is a... Um, Grace and Browning, his second solo album. Insurgentes is the, the name of the city um, in Mexico City. That's a, a street in Mexico City. The Raven, they refused to sing. 
probably my favorite Stephen Wilson uh, solo album. This is his third album. Stephen Wilson, cover version. This is where he does a bunch of uh, cover tunes, including um, Thank You. He does that um, Morissette, her song, um, Alanis Morissette. Thank You. He does a cover version of that. He does a bunch of covers on there. Pan Cannot Erase. I saw this tour in uh, Orlando. This is an exceptional album. This one here is going for big money now. I showed it uh, yesterday. This is uh, four and a half. This was after his fourth album. And then he did a uh, EP in between his fourth and his fifth album. So he called it four and a half. Got a bunch of great songs on that. And then this is uh, Cats and Trains. This is, uh, there's, a, there's two albums that have him live in Israel and uh, it's on like a brown splatter. These are getting pretty rare to find too. But I actually found this one in um, in Orlando at uh, Park Avenue CDs. This one here is uh, To The Bone. This was his next album, his, his uh, musical uh, adventure. He was, he was starting to change. He was starting to, he loves pop music. He loves XTC and Tears for Fears, and that's where he he grew up. He's like 52 years old, and uh, so he was right there in the 80s. He's a he loves the 80s uh, music, and uh, he started to get away from prog music and going into more of an 80s techno uh, style uh, music. And To the Bone really uh, took his audience by uh, by the short hairs, put it, <laughs> but. Uh, Terminating was the song on there that everybody was up in arms about. I like this. I like everything he does. This is um, How Big the Space. This is a 12 inch from uh, that, that album To the Bone. And it's on blue vinyl. It's on the blue vinyl. So there you go. We're almost done with Steve and for the night. We put Steve into bed here. How about this one? It's the Future Bites. I actually have two copies of this. I have the, the black vinyl, of course you do. The black vinyl and the black vinyl. If you haven't, Stephen Wilson is my favorite uh, artist, along with uh, Marillion. I don't do a top 10 of my favorite bands, but that changes like everybody else. But uh, lately it's been those two, and I still love Yes, uh, with John Anderson, by the way. But Stephen Wilson, The Future Bites, this is his latest album. And uh, it's really good. Now he's gone back and he's uh, did a new album with Porcupine Tree, his band. This one here is uh, Paint One Color. <laughs> the Emin Eminent Sleaze. This was uh, from the Future Bites, the 12 inch EP. These are um, UK pressings. Then we have uh, 12 Things I Forgot and Move Like a Fever. 12 inch. EPs from the Future Bites. Future Bites is an interesting album, to say the least. How about Stevie Nicks? We're still into talking about Steves and Stevies. This is a 12-inch promo um, from, um, this is Talk To Me from Rock A Little. I don't have uh, Rock A Little, I don't believe. Um, the Dream of the Blue Turtles is a sting. Um, he did two jazz um, albums after um, jazz rock albums after the police broke up. This is one of them. And the other one I'm still looking for on vinyl. But again, these are late 80s uh, releases, early 90s, and they're hard to find. But uh, I see this one out quite a bit. I don't ever see the other album out in the wild. I did see it one day, but it was quite expensive. Um, then we got Steve Winwood here with Michael Shreve. And... Um, Stumu Yamashita. This is the uh, band called Go. These albums are really good. If you love, if you like jazz fusion, you need to dip your toe into Go. These three. Michael Shreve is an excellent uh, musician. All three of those guys. Then we have uh, Go Two. 
This one has Aldi Miola he has added on here. Uh, Paul Jackson, uh, Peter Robinson, Claus Schultz, and then Michael Shreve and uh, Stumo Yamashita. But uh, Steve Wynn was not on the second one. But Demiola's on here. And Peter Robinson, my, my keyboardist. Then we have um, Strawberry Alarm Clock, Incense and Peppermints. Now we're going old school here. That's a great album. I was able to get a good copy, an OG. Now we're going to talk about one of my favorite bands. This is Early Straubs. This is uh, their first two albums put, in, put into a compilation. Now I don't have these two first albums, and these are on my want list. Matter of fact, I think these are on my top ten grail list. Um, they're just hard to find. You don't see them. Uh, first album is just called Just Straubs, and then their second album is called Dragonfly. But they put them on a comp, and I was able to score a comp of the two albums. So, yeah, gotta love this. Gotta love Early Straubs. And then we have um, just a collection of antiques and curios live at the Queen Elizabeth Hall. And I believe if you look on the back, you'll see a picture of Rick Wakeman on there sitting down. Yeah. Rick Wakeman was in the Straubs for a time. And how about from the Witchwood? There you go. The Hangman and the Pappas. And I love the Straubs. They got to be on my top. They're in my top. Tw I don't know if they're in my top 10, but they're in my top 20 best uh, bands of all time. And this is my favorite Straubs album, Brave New World. I love Heroin Heroin, and I love Ghost. Ghost is a. And you know, you could ask me next week, I'd tell you Ghost is my favorite. But uh, uh, this week it's Brave New World. And I, you don't ever see a copy of this. And I saw one in an antique mall not too long ago. I think he only had like four or five dollars on it and I left it there and I'm like nah, I already got one I don't need a second copy you know do I really need I'm why am I still thinking about it do I need to go back there someday and pick it up it's probably still there how about Straubs by Choice this is a UK you can tell by the cover um, it's a uh, it's like a best of the Straubs and it's got one of my favorite songs uh, the man who called himself Jesus oh my gosh what a great song and it's got it's just one great song after another on there. David Cousins' voice is just... And then I saw the Straubs on the Deep Cuts tour. We haven't gotten to that album yet, but this is a promo here. And this album is called uh, No Madness. This album's got uh, The Golden Salamander. That's a great song. But um, here's Deep Cuts. It's got my friend Peter on here. A bunch of great songs. This is when I saw the Straubs, and they did a bunch of songs from Heroin, Heroin, and Ghost, and all those uh, great bands. I got those two albums over here. Um, I have uh, two copies of each of those, but uh, I got them over here because I'm checking them out and seeing which one uh, sounds the best. Yeah. Sounds like we got thunderstorm coming. Burning for You, Straubs. Here's a, now we're getting into some of their some of their later stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and pull them out. There's Deadline. That's the one I think that uh, somebody was saying they really liked the cover on that hypnosis cover. And this one here is the best of Straubs. This has got the uh, pipe sticker on there. It's got Tears in Paven and. Uh, this is the best of heroin, heroin. It's the best of. Who out there else listens to the Straubs? Anybody else out there listening to the Straubs? How about Sugarloaf's first album? I just showed last night. I was showing the one I picked up. It's uh, Sugarloaf's second album. Here's their first album. Green Eyed Lady on there. I got the 45 too. And I seen another copy of that the other day. A minty copy. That I was going to check and see how mine looked. And, um. But I didn't pick it up. It was like two bucks. Trying not to get too many doubles. <laughs> Even though I see stuff out there that I really want. I said, oh man, I'll let them have that. But I already got it. How many people out there do that? You guys do that? Do you do that? Tony, do you do that? How about Old Goat? I know Old Goat does it. He'll he'll bring home a twofer in no, no time. He'll bring home one of you. Don, 
Oh, Don will do it too. Don will bring home stuff he's already got. Yeah, we all do it. I don't know why we do it. It's just that we're addicted to vinyl. We're addicted. How about Zin Zin? Anybody know about this album? Isn't that a beautiful album cover? The name of the band is Sun Treader. And I, I showed this album a few months ago. I picked it up. I was able to get a copy. And it's got Peter Robinson on keyboards on here. And Morris Pert. And um, it also has um, another guy on here that I don't even know who he is. He plays bass guitar. But um, these guys here were in Brand X. So this is a Brand X uh, side project, put it that way. Zin Zin. That's what it's called. Wow, that's it. We knocked that out of the park. And this album you were listening to is this album right here. And these guys, they're called Ragnarok. And this is their third album. I never thought I'd own another copy of this, and I've been for about a year, or two years now. I've been uh, had it on um, had it on eBay or in, in Discogs, and it would come up, and then it would be like seventy five dollars, one hundred and fifty dollars, forty five dollars, you know, seventy five dollars. Finally, I saw it on here for twenty dollars with five dollar for shipping. I pulled the trigger on it. Nobody else probably knows who the heck these people are. But I got uh, some albums here I want to show. So five albums that no one knows else has them and has them in the VC. And uh, five, I'm going to show you five right now that I know and nobody else talks about. And I know that nobody else probably even has these. And that I, I know that it's probably only going to be one or two of you out there that are even going to even heard of this album. So we'll start with this one. And this is there. I believe these guys are from Sweden, and uh, they're called Ragnarok. And uh, this album is called Fata Morgana, and it's kind of like jazz fusion meets rock meets uh, Zappa. I don't know. It's 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 whack. It's really good. It's all instrumental stuff. Um, so this is their third album. So check them out. And I think there's another band, another band called Ragnarok, but this one here is the, is the legit one. How about our Zatchel? I, sh I showed this not too long ago. This was Steve Hillagen, um, his 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 album with um, Peter Robinson, and um, yeah, Steve Hillage, man. This is a great album. This was supposed to have been Steve Hillage's first or um, Fish Rising, Steve Hillage's first solo album. Was supposed to be the second Arzatchel album, but uh, if you can find this album, you need to find this album. I'm just telling you, it's a great album. And I showed this one not too long ago. I don't think anybody has these. Nobody's anybody else you seen these or heard of these? Okay, let me know in the uh, comment section down below. How about this one here, Fata Morgana? That sound sound uh, is the same title of the album, but this is by a band called Parisio. This is another jazz fusion album. This guy, these people here are really good too. I believe they're Italian. And here's Ragnarok's second album. And I can't even pronounce. It's called uh, Fujalier Bagan. Something like that. I don't know if you can even see it with the plastic on there. But... Uh, their second album. Um, now I'm on the hunt for their first one. <laughs> I can find it. I didn't think I'd find number two and number three, let alone number one. And I saw number one the other day and somebody wanted like $170 for it. I said, oh no, that ain't gonna happen. So look what I found here. This is number five here for the five albums that um, nobody else has. In Search of Ancient Gods. This has uh, a man on here who plays the drums and his name happens to be William Bruford. Yeah, this is uh, a die-cut, 1976 UK, uh, based on the book of Eric Von Danken. This is a really good, another really good album. Um, progressive rock, uh, fusion. Um, yeah, you need to pick this one up. Anybody out there is a die-hard yes, uh, early yes, Bruford fan, 
uh, of his solo work, um, not Earthworks, but uh, more of his uh, uh, jazz fusion records. They're going to love this album right here with Bruford on it. So there you go. There's your five. There's your five albums. And there's my Fresh 50. And there's my new one that I picked up today and came in the mail. And um, that's all I got. 25 minutes. I hope you stuck in that long with me. I know it's a long time. And we're cruising on to 400. Um, so I'll be looking forward to getting to 400. That'll be a milestone for me for sure. And then we'll be on towards to 500. Uh, I want to thank all my new subscribers. And if you like the show, hit the bell and um, spend some time with uh, the North Carolina Vinyl Picker. And um, hit the like. It helps my little channel here in the world. And uh, we'll be talking to you soon. Support those troops out there. And uh, you'll all be good and take care. And we'll be uh, seeing you tomorrow night. I'm going to do another Fresh 50 coming at you tomorrow night. And uh, hopefully we can get into the S's. We're into the late S's and getting into the T's. And then we'll wrap this thing up uh, over the weekend. I hope to have it done by this weekend. I know I've been saying that. But I promise 50 records a day for 50 days. And we're closing in on those 50 days. I think we're up to day 35 or 36, something around there. So I still got a few days to wrap this up in 50 days. So uh, thanks for sticking with me during this trip through my entire record collection. I don't see anybody else out there doing this, um, showing their entire record collection when they have as many records as I do. And um, so it's been a monumental task. It's been fun doing it. I'm able to pull a few things out that I don't really need or want, and I can put them aside for the big sale. I'm going to do. I'm going to be in a record show in September, so I'm. Uh, I'm going to be pulling out some records to sell there. Uh, tables are like 50 bucks, And uh, I'm going to bring some 45s and some CDs I've been finding at Goodwill and stuff like that. That uh, bands that, uh, that uh, I don't really listen to. That I'm not interested in. I just bought them to uh, see if somebody else would want them. So I'll take care. And uh, we'll be talking to you soon. And uh, bye for now. See you tomorrow night.